be a little bit of an odd video <laughs> and broader. This is the underside of one of the pieces of the stands. So in order to do your request justice, I'm trying to film as best as I can the lower or the, well, the bottom of that basket in which the stands are inside with the hob material. As you can see, being the media and the roots are doing great. At least I hope you can see that because I'm at a really weird angle. <laughs> they are very, very high up so that I can at least see part of the screen. And I hope all of this is in focus, but I've got roots coming out. There doesn't seem to be any damage to the roots. There will be in future mechanical damage if they extend until I get these baskets hung up. But the hob material is doing really well. So let's go over to the next piece. So the roots here are not as abundant, but the plant is growing aggressively even during this time of year. But you can see there is no, no problem with the roots and the hob material at all. So I'm going to take them down and then we can have a look at them from a better angle and see how their growth habit is going. Right. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. I wanted to get those roots and that angle of filming out of the way while I could still hold the camera somewhat steady and show you that the hob material is not impeding the roots at all. So welcome to this update of my two stands. Right now they are living here, which is actually in the summer, my blooming alley in the middle shelf. And you can see that on a sunny day, they are getting dappled sun for as long as the sun is up. So that can be six to seven hours a day from morning until evening. For the sake of the video, I am going to pull the curtain down though. Otherwise I'm going to get a lot of reflection and that will probably distort a little bit the light issues with regards to going in and seeing how they're actually doing in this setup, which is kind of radical. So Anne, thank you very much for your request update. Let's get that curtain down, go in and have a look-see. This is a no ID. It has a fancy name from the seller, Olympus 1975, Chocolate Neuf, something like that, whatever. It has not bloomed for me yet because my previous setup was not conducive to letting the spikes grow out. And that is why I changed the setup trying to stay as inorganic as possible. And I've used this hob material here. And clearly, and you know why you're asking, because it is super unusual, <laughs> but it's working. The roots are absolutely accepting this material. There is no issues with humidity. Granted, it is now winter, so things are a little bit easier, but you can see that there are new growths still pushing out. So there's one here on the left, and this one here is a new one as well. They are also a little bit smaller, I do admit to that, but they are winter growths for one. And secondly, this orchid had a lot, a lot of ripping, tearing, disruption in order to get it off what I had it before, which had a little base of lava rock and mainly moss. But you can see on this piece here, there's another new growth right here, just starting to mature. And that is its leaf right there. All in all, as far as bestiality goes with regards to its growth, it hasn't stopped, it hasn't skipped a beat. Actually, I'm super, super pleased. So we'll go on to the second piece and see if I can keep it as clear. If not, I'm going to put the curtain up. I think you can see that. At least on my screen, it looks good. I hope it does on editing as well. But look at that little menagerie of roots. 
It's like a little ecosystem forest going on. You can just see the little pixies dancing around in there. Very careful with these roots because they're super spiny. Whoops, excuse me, leaf. Thank you. <laughs> but you see none of the roots that are going in and touching the hob material are having any problems at all. It is normal for a Stanhopia to be unruly with the roots, not necessarily go down, but also up and around. So I'm going to go to another angle, just one moment. And everything here looks just tickety-boo, in my opinion. The only thing missing now with this experiment and this setup is to see if they will bloom. If the spikes can come out reasonably well in order for them to bloom. But once again, you can see how the roots are having no issues with this hob material whatsoever. They're in and out and through and down and around. No problem at all. I do apologize for the shaky video. There is no other way at this moment to actually show you these cuts better. And it is early afternoon, so now they're getting a little bit of a misting of just plain RO water because despite being cooler in the evenings, it is actually quite nice and toasty here in my blooming alley, which is south facing. But that curtain is up and you can see by the leaves that they're a little bit lighter than normal because of how much light they're getting. Some are dying back like this one, but I attribute that to being an old leaf. Same here. I'm attributing all this to being old growths, old leaves on old pseudobulbs. So I'm not concerned. Those leaves changing color like that, I'm not concerned. Let's move over to the second piece one more time. Here you can see that is the start of a leaf dying back. I do not attribute this at all to the setup. Those are old. If I see anything happening on the new leaves, then I would have to intervene. But my leaves on my Stanhopias have a duration of two years, and in the third year, they start to die back. So that is how I follow and control and monitor if the leaves are doing well, if the orchid is under stress. Considering what she went through in the summer of 2020, this is good going. This gives me hope. I have every intention of hanging both pieces up because since I've had this transition into this kind of setup with a hob material, both pieces have doubled in size again. So the growth kept growing a little bit smaller, understandable after that intervention. The size of the orchids, as you can see, has doubled and the growth has not stopped. They haven't stalled at all. They're trucking away, they're chugging along. I have every intention of getting hooks up onto the blooming alley, the archway above us sturdy hooks and having them hang from above because I don't know where to put them. And the freak winds I've been having, they'll just blow off their stands. Now I have a puppy, I can't have that lower stand. I can't put any of them on a lower stand. And wow, if a puppy bumps against a somewhat wobbly stand that normally wouldn't be a problem, puts these on the ground, I would be really upset. I don't need any more leaf chewing going on. And if I can avoid it, I will. Isn't that pretty? Hob material. It's like a real cute little pixie forest. I love what's going on in this basket. I really, really do. I think both of them are phenomenal. 
Now we just wait to see if the spikes will find their way out. And I shall organize somebody to come and help me put up hooks in order to get them to hang. Because when the season starts and it's warm enough outside at night, these shelves have other occupants. So Anne, thank you very, very much for your request. I hope that that answers your questions, that it actually shows some results regarding the hob material and the setup, the very unconventional setup for Stanhopia growing. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everybody. I really appreciate you watching this video. Take care and stay safe. Bye.